Are you tired of making your PCBs on a breadboard, on a perf board like this? Is it just too untidy, ugly and hard to get working? Would you like to make some beautiful double-sided PCBs just like they are from a factory? And do you want to do it at home uh, in a pretty simple way? If yes, then this is the right video for you. Let's get into it. For a start, you want to make a schematic for your uh, PCB design. Uh, it, it can be anything. Uh, then you have to create it into the PCB and connect everything up, just like this. This is a PCB for my uh, solid state Tesla coils uh, musical like interrupter. Then uh, what you want to do is you want to export this file as PDF, uh, separated layers and you want to mirror the top layer and remove the mirroring from the bottom layer and then all these other ones you don't need. But we can turn them up. And you want to export this into some folder. When you have exported the file uh, you want to open them up. Uh, in the PDF format, uh, both the top and bottom layer here, and, and you want to print them both out. Uh, both out. But uh, when you're printing, uh, when you click print, uh, be sure to go down to more settings and select actual size. Uh, otherwise, your size is going to be too big for the board uh, or too small. So don't forget to uh, select actual size before printing. And then just print them all out both the top and bottom layer. It's time to make the PCB. Uh, for this you're gonna need uh, your double-sided PCB material that's covered uh, in the photoresist. Uh, you are previously printed out uh, PCB uh, designs. As I said, you can print them out either on uh, quite transparent paper like this or on like uh, the overhead uh, projector transparencies. I just don't have a laser printer, so I couldn't print on those. Uh, you're gonna need, need a photo frame uh, for clamping uh, the designs on the PCB uh, for two trays, uh, one for the etchant and one for developer some gloves, uh, the etchant itself which is sodium persulfate uh, developer which in my case is sodium uh, metasilicate and you're gonna need some weights uh, to weigh the chemicals uh, for the exposing, you're also gonna need a lamp, uh, a, like a 13 watt fluorescent tube lamp. So let's get started. Uh, first, I'm gonna uh, mix together the etchant and developer solutions. Uh, I'm using two beakers for that, but you can use any plastic container. Uh, in these bags, they already have the uh, developer uh, pre measured, and there is uh, 22 grams of it in here. And it says uh, to add. Uh, 0.3 to 0.5 liters of water. So let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna use the small beaker for that. Uh, here I have some water, uh, which I'm gonna pour in. Yeah, add about uh, 300 milliliters. This side. Uh, next is the etchant solution. You don't have to buy uh, this much of etchant, I just uh, etch a lot of boards. So I bought it. And you want to measure out about uh, 100 grams of it. This etchant you have to mix uh, in a proportion 1 to 5. So to these uh, 100 grams of etchant, I'm going to add 500 milliliters of water. There we go. And now I just have to uh, wait for it to dissolve. Both solutions uh, have been now prepared. Uh, so let's now work on the PCB. Uh, for the PCB, what we want to do is uh, align both of these very precisely and uh, to do that uh, I like to use uh, this uh, like lamp and but first uh, what you want to do is uh, basically cut these out uh, so that uh, there's about uh, 1.5 to 2 centimeters around it. And uh, be sure to cut one out smaller uh, because we're gonna have to glue them both together with some tape. Yeah, uh, just like that, this is the one. As you see, uh, this one is uh, smaller than the other. So just go together like that, like this. So let's uh, get them precisely aligned and, and tape them together. I have it uh, now 
taped together pretty precisely and it's uh, very well aligned. And it, it's very important that's very well aligned so that both uh, the, the etching on both sides matches. Uh, now we just uh, peel off the protective uh, film from the PCB and we just slide it in there. Uh, I would suggest doing it in a dark room uh, because uh, the, the photo resist is pretty sensitive to light, especially like uh, UV outside light. Uh, to modern LEDs it's not so sensitive, but still it's better to remove it and uh, put it uh, in our listing uh, in a dark room or in a dark place. Uh, so here we go, you just like uh, put it in the middle like this between the uh, both paper layers. Focus, uh, yeah, uh, between these two paper layers and like that. And then you uh, wanna squish it together with your uh, photo frame. It doesn't have to be this big, it can be even smaller or even bigger. So yeah, just like uh, placed on there, and then you will have to expose both sides uh, with the fluorescent tube, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now. Just like carefully put it down together and try not to move uh, when you uh, switch the other side, uh, try not to move it too much uh, because it, it could misalign it. Okay, so now I'm gonna expose this board uh, with this 13 watt fluorescent tube. Uh, for exposing time, uh, I found that 8 minutes were great, uh, and I have great results with that. And uh, the distance is 10 to 20 centimeters away from the board this time. Just like turn it on, position it, and set a timer for 8 minutes. While it's exposing, uh, we can pour in the developer and etchant in uh, their own separate trays. So I'm gonna pour my etchant in this tray. And my de developer here. And here I have them both poured in. Eight minutes have passed and the first high side has been exposed. So uh, let's flip it over. Carefully remove it, turn it around and put it back. Oh yeah, here. Carefully, I just uh, I just carefully turned it and put it to the other side and uh, they cover it back. Yeah. And now let's expose this side for eight minutes. So another eight minutes have passed and the other side of the board is exposed too. So let's develop it. Here, let's. Uh, get a developer and let's drop our PCB in it. So here I got my developer uh, and exposed PCB. So let me just uh, take it out of there and drop the developer. developer. Should develop for like two minutes or something, or until the race start up here. You can rock it around so it develops faster. When developing, make sure you get uh, off all the unnecessary photo resist. Uh, but don't scratch it, you, you can lightly uh, with your finger go over it to clean it off, but uh, don't do it too hard, so, uh, otherwise it's gonna damage the uh, part you wanna keep. So I think it's good, it's been about two minutes. Uh, so yeah, this is the board. It, it has the uh, photo resist is still on the place that weren't, weren't exposed and the photo resist is gonna protect the copper uh, when we're etched so those places are just gonna have be left with copper and everything else is gonna be without it uh, now wash the board with some water and then we can start etching uh, the board is now washed uh, from the developer and now we can start etching so uh, just drop it into the container with the etchant the etching time depends on the size of the board, but for something like this, I'd say about maybe half an hour, maybe a bit more. I uh, just have to look at it and maybe uh, agitate it a bit, turn around and stuff. And it works, it etches better if it's uh, warm, but I, I can't heat this dish. If you would want to heat it, I would recommend some like uh, Pyrex uh, dish used for baking, and because that you could heat and uh, to about like 30, 40 degrees and that's gonna uh, speed up the etch etching process.
etching is now complete. Uh, as you can see, uh, the board has been basically fully etched and what's only left on it is the copper traces we needed. So let's just rinse the board off in some clean water. Uh, as you can see, I also put in a uh, another board in here uh, quite a bit later, uh, so it hasn't etched yet, uh, but this one is a single-sided board, as you see. It has uh, no copper on the other side, I never did have. And this is a, the PCB for a capacitor bank on my half-bridge solid-state Tesla coil. Of part 2 video on that is coming soon. But yeah, let's now uh, focus on this one, on our... But yeah, so now let's focus on our double-sided PCB we just made. Yeah, so this is our PCB, and as you can see, the only thing left on there is the copper traces we needed on the both sides, and they match up very well, which is uh, pretty good for this simple uh, homemade PCB way. So now we just have to clean off the photoresist off of these traces, uh, and then we can dr drill out the holes and use it. Uh, to clean up the photoresist, you can either use some acetone and uh, scrub it, or just use some sandpaper and some very fine sandpaper and, and take off a uh, thin layer. Uh, as I will demonstrate. So here I have some uh, focus, uh, very fine sandpaper, like 400. Wait, uh, 240. Great. So I just uh, sand it, and when sanding, uh, sand it lightly so you don't remove too much copper. And here we go, the copper traces are now shiny, nice and shiny, and ready to be drilled and soldered. So there we go, now you know how to make very nice double-sided PCBs at home in a pretty simple way. See you in my next video.